I survived 100 days in steampunk Minecraft. This world is filled with complex machinery, huge structures, and insane bosses. In these 100 days, I want to master the create mod, craft some flying machines, and even venture out to other planets. First day, steampunk Minecraft. Let's see these things. Okay, so if we move up too high or too low, we have this thing. Got it to level three already. We have this necklace. Let's see what this does. Whenever you die, not have to worry about that. I'll equip it anyway. Wow, this makes everything significantly harder. How about we hold off on that for a bit? I'm gonna go make a crafting table really quickly. Page with ability. Are you see? Are you guys seeing this thing? It's moving into the skill. Okay, I guess I need a skill book after. After grabbing the first two quests, I crafted a wooden pickaxe, gathered tons of cobblestone, and upgraded to stone tools. An item I really needed to get was this skill book, which would help me improve a ton of my abilities, but for that I needed one gold ingot. While running around this little area, I found a cave and some exposed coal ores. This coal allowed me to craft some torches, but uh, once I heard some skeletons, I decided to move on. Honestly, that looks like a, a, a witch's hut. From all my experience playing the game, there should be some wheat on the bottom. What the heck? The four hay bales inside of this place got me like 10 pieces of bread, and before exploring the rest of this tower, I cooked up some of these pork chops. While waiting for that, I completed some more quests, and then finally hopped into this tower. I picked up four strings as I was climbing up, which meant I could craft a backpack and clear up my inventory. After being safe and taking the witch out, I moved on to the top floor. The backpack was clutch though, I, I genuinely needed that. Free enchantment table, which I think we can pick up. Feather falling and slayer book. This slayer thing is kind of sick. Rabbit's foot, you never know what these things are going to be good for. More string, let's go. Put this all the way. 33 books. Do iron pickaxe, that's next. And a side alloys. And then we're gonna craft our first shield. I don't think I wanna tempt fate. Let's go to sleep. We'll wake up tomorrow. As soon as it was next morning, I went out to go find a cave and was attacked by a weird mob. I managed to escape and ended up grabbing a ton more coal. As I was running away, I had to dodge some bears. Under sea level is where iron should be. Let's get down there. Oh boy. No iron, you gotta be kidding me. Oh, I see some iron. There it is. One, two, two iron. Oh, more iron. We gotta be really careful. That is not a safe place. That cave is much bigger than I thought. Good, lock those guys off. Whoa. Hit the jackpot. And then I think a stick in the middle, that's so annoying. Hey, let's go. Respirator. So I guess that helps you with the breathing down here. Now that I had a shield and an iron pickaxe, I decided to move on from this area. This actually worked out very well since I found a much better cave. I immediately got some more iron and crafted even more torches with all these things that I had. After cooking a ton of stuff, I made an iron chest plate and started staircasing down to a larger portion of this cave. I fought off some mobs at a distance and really took my time getting down here. Once a bulk of these mobs were taken care of, I hopped down. The first thing I grabbed here was this Expetrified Orb, which got me three levels, and then I picked up even more iron ore. As soon as this iron ingot cooked, I crafted leggings. Uh, what are you, sir? You're just a, a mining unit? What, it, what, what even are you? I don't even understand. Oh, you know what? Please come around more. Oh yeah, from some quest rewards, I got like five levels and then just decided to basically grab everything I could see in this cave. So here I fought like three of these broken mining units and each one of them did so much damage to me. Then on the bright side, a goblin spawned which allowed me to get tons of extra iron ingots. Using this goblin, I was able to craft a full set of armor and I picked up 50 iron ingots. Before leaving this place, I picked up almost half a stack of andesite because I would need that for later. On the surface, I upgraded my backpack and then crafted an iron sword. I want to find like a proper plains biome to really start a base on. Hopefully I can get food here. Get away from me, sir. I'm taking the anvil too. Oh, there we go. Yeah, I genuinely love these towers. Two gold blocks, two iron blocks, that's so much stuff. We can even upgrade our backpack, but I probably shouldn't worry about that yet. I think we might need gold for something else. 
Oh, I know this place. There's a something in here. Yeah, emerald. Are you guys? There's like massive wolves on the mini map. Let's not even try. All right, I'm calling it a day. Uh, I did see gigantic wolves. They look super big in the mini map. They're probably not that big, but I'm not gonna chance it. There's a bear right there too. So let's get the heck out of there. They're uh, they're not that big. I don't know if they're super hostile to me. So there is gonna be a vindicator in there. That's the guy that I'm worried about. Turns out this little illager camp didn't have any vindicators, but for some reason these guys with these crossbows never stop spawning. I ended up taking out so many of these dudes, and I also snatched up all the hay bales, and even tried going around the camp. Here I actually noticed a pirate ship which was funny. I did pick up even more food, but eventually I had to run away since these enemies just never stopped spawning. To find a new area, I crafted a boat and went around this cold ocean. By the time I was back on land, I noticed a few structures on my mini-map. Hello, outcast. You don't get mad if I take your stuff, right? Oh, you have so much food. Oh my god. So much everything. Thank you, bro. With a bunch of food, emerald, and coal gathered, I went over this hill towards another really cool looking place. Let's get inside this place. What the heck? This is gorgeous. So inside of this little house, I picked up some leather and a ton of hay bales from the walls. This allowed me to make one of the most important items, a skill book. Now the skills I had at the start all happen to be the really basic ones, but once you find some of the really good skill little parchments, you can become super OP. I upgraded attack speed and kept the rest of my XP inside of this book. You know what, I've actually gotta take these. And the hand crank, these are awesome. Fluid pipe, I'll take one, why not? Oh, they're filling the tank with honey, that's so sick. I'm taking the fluid tank too, because you can actually set up some really great machines with these. While grabbing quest rewards, I ended up getting five more levels and a ton more andesite alloys. Still, around this time, I was looking for a place to settle down, so I kept moving. I ended up finding another outlaw's hut, which gave me even more food, and since my backpack was full, I used gold to upgrade it to another tier. From there, I marked down this woodland structure, which I think was for a conjurer, and then just kept moving along. I made sure to chop down a single dark oak tree, since I really liked the look of them. And then finally, I found an area that looked decent. At first, there was just three structures next to each other, and uh, the first structure was another outlaw's hut, which had some really good loot. In here, I also used up tons of levels on attack speed and strong fist. Past these structures, I found the place I wanted to build my base on. Yeah, this is probably as nice of an area as we're gonna get. Might as well settle with this. What the heck is hitting me? What are you, bro? What even is this thing? Since this area looked nice, I cleared out my backpack and wanted to make more sophisticated chests, but I realized I didn't have any redstone. Then, with this area cleared out properly, I chopped down a large tree and crafted my first water wheel. Once that was done, I used these andesite alloys on strip logs to make andesite casings. Once that was done, I crafted a hammer and then made propellers. All of this was just for an encased fan. Okay, so the encased fan goes here. Behind it is a water wheel like this. I need water to go from here. Basically moving this thing, got it. Now this needs a gearbox. Gearbox, bang, vertical gearbox. This should be enough to, look at that. We should be able to use the same water, I'm not even gonna lie. For another water wheel. Boom. Now this thing needs a cog wheel. And that's we're working too. We need to create some goggles and I need to pick up some lava. Yeah, they should be, are they pulling in? Should I maybe move the water this way? Oh, that did it. Let's dump it all out here. That should all cook up later. There we go. Okay, so it doesn't really need the basin, I guess. That's so sick. Why aren't these cooking? Should it be one more block closer? I don't understand. That is what it is. That's so sick. Oh my god. We just we're doing science here, ladies and gentlemen. Around this time, I had the engineer's goggles and pressed more of these gold ingots so I could also craft a wrench. One of the big things I really wanted was an automatic create form, so I favorited this super glue, which I would really need later. Turns out you could use dough to make slime balls, which are basically needed for the glue, so I placed on a millstone. 
With that done, I started making the outline for a house. Now this place was just for a starter storage room and an enchantment table, so it was gonna be the most basic house imaginable. By the next morning, I had the frame of the house done and started placing down oak planks on the floor. With that finished, I bulk cooked up some sand and then started placing down these glass panes everywhere. For some reason, this dark oak sapling just did not want to grow at all, so I moved over to this biome that was right in front of my base and grabbed these redwood logs. I ended up using tons of redwood stairs and oak slabs for the roof. Inside of the house, I crafted even more bookshelves and uh, actually set up a little enchantment area. To finalize everything, I moved every single item I had laying outside, inside of the base, and then went to sleep. Day 10 to day 11, I really needed to hit the mines so I could grab uh, redstone and lapis. I made my way towards those three structures that were near my house, and I climbed up this first building, which was called the Enchanter's Tower. Inside one of the chests, I picked up one lapis, and then on the top floor, I picked up a bucket of slime. Before checking out this illager farm structure, I also uh, snatched up some melons. On the first floor of this structure, in the barrels, I picked up a stack of bread and a stack of wheat. Then on the next floor, with an iron hoe, I snatched up tons of hay bales. On the final floor, I was basically cheesing the mobs using this ladder, and uh, I took them out pretty easily. Oh, chain meal, don't need that, never mind. Mending book, sick. So by now, I had an absolute boatload of food, and I decided to hop into this large cave that was right in front of me. Down here, I lit up a large area and also picked up a pearl. Even though I almost died, it was one of the scariest things ever. On top of that, I mined six expetrified orbs, which got me up to level 34. From there, I wanted to come back home. Here, I started cooking the ores, stored all the items I had collected, and then crafted this feeding upgrade. When I checked my enchants, it turned out that I had a fortune 3 enchant, but I was just completely out of lapis. I tried finding that cleric that was in that enchanter's tower, but for some reason the villager despawned. So I actually decided to focus on the mine. Everything was going well until I got under Y equals zero. Turns out you needed the respirator to go this deep. I had to run back home and equip this thing, and then I decided to actually venture out the other direction. The first structure I looted in this place was the house with two outcasts, and then I climbed my way up this uh, pillager tower. Old eye, a corrupted eye, chanting, take a recovery, efficiency and mending. Okay, if we get fortune on that, that's actually emerald ring too. Oh, sick, dude! Drops twenty five percent experience. Why wouldn't I take that? That's crazy. Oh, and unbreaking. Did we just get... Oh, that was a very successful trip. I'm not going to lie. I just need lapis now. Day 12 to 13. Now that I had some pickaxes that I could combine together, I still needed lapis, which meant it was time to get serious. I had the respirator on, which allowed me to go significantly deeper, and I decided to start a strip mine back in that old cave around uh, Y equals negative 10. I also noticed I was above a cave on my minimap, so of course I started digging towards it. This actually took me a little bit, but I managed to break into this small cave and immediately found my first diamond. On the other side of this cave, I picked up redstone, which was also something I needed, and then I decided to come up and look for lapis at a safer depth. This time I strip mined around uh, Y equals zero and actually went inside of another cave system. Luckily this place had lapis. With that picked up, I rushed home to make these sophisticated storage upgrades with the redstone. This allowed me to turn this double chest into two iron chests. From there, I got fortune 3 on my pickaxe and combined it with the mending pickaxe that I had from the pillager tower. Oh yeah, this thing. Please give me something good. 20 levels? Dude. Yeah, might as well. I also upgraded these chests to gold and grabbed all the items needed to craft more respirators. I was just missing charcoal, which uh, all happened to be inside of this enchanter's tower, and that allowed me to get a bunch of spare respirators too. With these, I hopped back down into the mine to grab tons of items. Basically, I was binding whatever I saw. I picked up a bunch of XP orbs and put levels into strong fist. Deeper into this cave, I picked up tons of copper, gold, and iron. Around this time, I ended up running out of torches completely, so I slowly made my way back home to cook up all these ores. Once everything was done, I crafted a new set of iron armor and started rolling enchants. This took tons of levels, but they all had unbreaking, which was super sick. 
I even made these iron gloves, which was supposed to increase my attack damage. Day 14 to day 15, I started off these days by chopping these large trees down and making tons of torches. At this point, I really needed diamonds badly, so I went off to the west of my base and found a little illager camp. Here, I got the bad omen effect and then made my way over to this illager barn house. Before taking out the mobs in here, I cleared the bad omen effect and actually got tons of enchanted books from this structure. From there, I dove into this cave and began searching for ores. Immediately, I picked up 4 XP orbs and started ripping through these other ores with my fortune pickaxe. Deeper into this cave, I got tons more stuff and used this minimap to find other caves. As soon as I broke into a large cave, I used up all my XP orbs, which uh, got me up to like level 40 almost. I then ransacked an amethyst geode, destroyed a vampire, and fought this mob called a frenzied knight. Now this guy was actually very tough, and turns out you had to wait for it to unequip the shield, but I didn't know that my first time. Instead, I took tons of damage, but I did manage to get away. Around this time, I had tons of ores, and finally started finding diamonds. Also, in this part of the cave, I actually took out another frenzied knight, and the quest reward for that gave me 3 levels. With all that done, I started making my way back home. Day 16, back home, I cooked up all those ores that I had gathered, and then upgraded another chest just in case. Once I had put all the items away, I used the diamonds that I had collected to make a chest plate, one pickaxe, and leggings. Then for enchants, I ended up getting really decent ones on all this new gear. I actually had to re-enchant this pickaxe, but I ended up with efficiency 4 and fortune 3. With this, I started getting rid of the obsidian right next to my base. Anyway, I built the nether portal after that and then lit that thing up. I also crafted another iron shield and hopped into the nether dimension. So immediately I noticed some issues. The heat was crazy. I didn't know that there was a lantern just yet, so I gathered some quartz and came home. A 17 to day 18, luckily I checked the quests and picked up this soul spring lamp which should keep me safe in the nether. Since I was back home anyway, I decided to craft this mechanical mixer and hook this machine up to the water wheel I had set up. Since this one needed some speed, I had to use a few more cogs than I was used to. With all that set up, I could now actually get blaze burners, which would also help me make an end game steam engine as well. But I really didn't want to head back to the nether, so I decided to explore the area towards the north of my base. As I was scaling this mountain, I found an entrance to a mine shaft. The main reason I looked forward to this was to uh, hopefully get relics out of the chests in here. Immediately inside of this mine shaft, I was in a spider spawner room and the chest had a fire ward ring. Now, this thing grants me fire immunity, so I was already pretty happy. Deeper into this mine shaft, I found a structure which looked very scary, so I marked it down for later. Also from this mine shaft, I uh, scaled down using a water bucket, and from one of these veins, I picked up 11 diamonds. On top of that, I even found a tetra forge, which I really couldn't use just yet. As I was picking up my quest rewards, I somehow managed to get 30 levels because I picked up this firewood ring, and that was huge. I mined two more diamond ores in this area and started working my way back home. Here I placed glowberries around my house and then made a diamond helmet, boots, and sword. With all these new levels I had, I actually ended up getting pretty great enchants on the boots and leggings. It took me a few more tries to get a stacked sword. Once I did though, I used my mending book on it. From there, with all this spare XP, I raised as many skills as I could up to level 5. Now I was jumping higher, swimming faster, and taking less fall damage. Since the quest rewards for this Iron Spells mod happened to be OP, I wanted to complete some more of them. I placed an inscription table down, and it actually gave me 3 orbs of temporary flight as a reward. The next morning I did some light decorating, I cleared out another layer of obsidian, and filled it with cobblestone just temporarily. I would actually need this area for a potential build later. With that done, I started making path blocks, and connecting it up to the nether portal. I also added texture to it using some gravel and cobblestone. With that done, I dug up a bunch of dirt and started replacing some of the cobble I had on top of the old lava pool. From there, I even put like deep slate tiles underneath the create machines just to make it look more industrial. And uh, before the night ended, I finally covered up that gross looking lava pool area. Day 20 to day 21, I had enough items to make an advanced feeding upgrade and also crafted tons more bread. Then to fuel this lamp that would keep me safe in the nether, I crafted a sewing table and a hearth, which then gave me a soul sprout. With this lamp and some fuel, I could finally not overheat in the nether. 
Just to help me explore in the nether, I actually ended up using one of those orbs of flight and I was able to start moving around freely in this dimension. The first structure I found in the nether was an ancient nether portal and then right after that I picked up four gold blocks from this little tower. Around this time I actually started running out of flight time so I started uh, moving closer to my portal. Here I popped another orb of flight and I decided to explore in a different direction. Dang, I'm not getting lucky at all. Oh, there it is, fortress. So inside of this fortress, I picked up some blaze rods and I thought I would get some really good loot in the main room. Turns out it was just junk. Yeah, we'll come back in a bit. And then the goal is to snatch up a blaze or two. Yeah, so we can start getting some blaze burners. Oh yeah, let's grab some uh, glowstone over here. Back home, I picked up these trophies as quest rewards and then placed down redwood stairs and fences around my house as decoration. I also lit up these glowberries. With this place looking so much better, I grabbed three empty burners and hopped back into the nether. In five minutes, we'll grab some blazes, three blazes to start with, and then we'll try and get some soul sand. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you, sir. Whoa. Whoa, what is this structure? Jeez, what is this place? This one is crazy, it's the Hall of the Piglin King. So this Hall of the Piglin King structure was insane. I mean, the piglins in here could actually break blocks. The only reason I survived was because of my flight orb. The loot in here though was absolutely terrible. I only got like two efficiency four books and uh, since my flight was running out, I had to start making my way back. As soon as I got back home, I set one blaze burner underneath my mixer and started making these brass ingots, which would be needed for the next level of machines. By the next morning, I set up the mechanical press once again across the old machines to start pressing the brass ingots into brass plates. With this done, I made a brass hand and spent a ton of levels and lapis trying to get a single unbreaking book. I only managed to get like a sweeping edge by the way. I really need this super glue stuff. Slime balls, which needs wheat dough, which I can make. That's just water and wheat can make wheat dough. And we can turn that, okay, we just need a lime green dye. We're gonna go this way, go out exploring this way until we find a desert or anything that can give us green dye. Yeah, with super glue, we can finally start making concoctions and big machines. I put some levels into the feather falling. Yes, yeah, so I'm not really taking too much damage. And this place has some nice books potentially. Tons of charcoal. Oh, I'll take the gold. Why not? More buckets of slime. What can I do with this? Oh. That's what it does. Oh, I'm an idiot. I have one. I think I have one in my base. And two is basically all I need. Okay, what am I doing? There you are. Boom, boom, boom. Let's go. Boom. Mechanical bearing. So we might need to clear a bigger area for now, but I think we're good. Water wheel. Bearing on top. We have most of it already set up. Keep like this. And I think we just put it this way. Oh, there we go. That's one, and then one, two, three, four. Perfect, okay. This way, which I'm gonna, hmm, I'm just gonna put an oak chest here. So, that should be plenty, honestly. Basically wanted to then shoot down into a double chest. Okay, I think we're good. Once I had the machinery glued up, I placed down a layer of dirt underneath where all the crops would be planted. I then used tons of deep slate tiles to cover the outside and then put two sources of water down. At first, I only had like one wheat seed and like three potatoes. Okay. Create. I have a quest reward. Whoa. I got two netherite ingots as a quest reward. What in the world? Are you kidding me? Okay, one for the sword. We'll, we'll wait, we'll wait. That's crazy. How do we get netherite? Before this night ended, I bookmarked all these items that would help me make a better storage system and filled out this farm some more. Then on one side, I planted these soul sprouts so I could have ton of these for nether travel later. I ended the day by force loading the chunks my base was in. For the entire day after, I was just watching my plants grow and it literally took forever to just see one of these potatoes grow fully. I also extended a path towards this auto farm and then uh, started using some of this bone meal on the crops. Later that night, I had crafted a diamond shield and unlocked this ability to enchant items within my skills menu. 26 days in, I wanna make 
pretty large mechanical drill. So let's look that up. It's gonna be like this. 10. So we have 15 more. Oh. That's solid. It's gonna be start off and then we'll put the drills on here. Okay, I think this is what it needs to look like. So we need 25 more andesite casing. Okay. I'm gonna have to go mining for another one of these. 10 drills. Okay, more drills, which means more iron. Oh my god. I ended up staying down in the mines the entire night and picked up 47 iron ores plus a bunch of other stuff like lapis and XP orbs. I came back to my base by morning, cooked up some of the iron ingots and filled out the rest of these drills. Once that was done, I needed a few more items, the most important being these two deployers. I first used sandpaper to get polished red quartz and then crafted some electron tubes. Once that was done, I then hooked up these two deployers on this machine. Now these things basically place down blocks in front and then rails behind that to just keep the machine perpetually moving. Before gluing everything together, I placed down tons of chests to collect the loot and spread this glowstone around. This should be everything. It's this first layer. To the anisite casing. Oh. To there. Boom. Okay. Here. Up. This all the way to there. And that's everything connected, I think. Oh. Okay. Oh, I think it's what I think it works. Oh, that's so dude. That's so sick. And it uses up that too. Oh my god, that's amazing. There. Boom. And then if I... Oh, I just had the whole thing. So with this really cool machine set up and picked up, I wanted to test it out, but I had tons of issues. Mainly because I forgot to set this cart assembler to like lock the rotation, which basically made the whole process of getting this machine started way harder. After a while, this thing was finally moving, and it was moving really well. I was genuinely surprised at how well this thing worked. Around this time, I had also figured out how to set the filters up, so this machine would just place down cobble automatically, and then rails after that, just to keep everything moving along. It was also collecting items inside of the double chest that I had set up on the front. This thing was the trial run, so I didn't expect anything good. I did get some gold and one diamond. 29 days in, I need a bunch of things. Crafting terminal. You need mechanical crafters for these. And they all need to be powered too. I need a precision mechanism. Those iron nuggets deploys large cog wheels. Deploy cog wheels. It gets a precision mechanism. And it needs to be done five times. Okay. Keep an eye on that. We need that real bad. This thing. So I need I need kelp. But before that, let's go take on a boss. This woodland thing that I remember seeing. I think I've already been up there. I'm not mistaken. I don't, no, I don't think so. These ones might be the ones with the diamonds. Oh, this one's sick. Those give tons of levels. I have nebula. We'll keep that. More tatter tomes. Whoa. Efficiency unbreaking. Take that. Let's use these tatter tomes. And they turn into paper. Oh, this one has a diamond block in there. Give me that. Thank you. Let's get the heck out of here. Let's go back home. Back home, I gathered torches, filled out my farm a little bit, and repaired some of my diamond gear before uh, heading out once again. Is that a blaze of indicator looking thing? What is that? What did you just draw? Orb of falling, orb of ascension, iron sword. Jeez. Whoa. Fix my five. A oh, totem. Oh, another mending book. That is going on the pickaxe. For sure. Once the main tower was looted, I looked through some of the side chests, which were all pretty decent, and then kept going towards the woodland structure that I marked down. Along the way, I put one more point into Strong Fist, and then took some points off of mining, to put all those into a bunch of other skills which help tons. 
Then I found that one Illager Barnyard thing again, and in here I tamed a horse and put this diamond horse armor on it. Sadly, this horse could only take me so far since I didn't have a lead. I actually ended up taking the horse armor off. From there, I went past a few structures which actually managed to have some decent loot. At this point, my backpack was filled. Okay, this is the place. This should be like called a theater or something. And down there is the area where the a conjurer should be. Oh. Come on, you. I already knocked out half of its health. Gotcha. Did I get a quest for this? I did. Oh, coal. How much coal? 10 coal. By the time I was out of this structure, it was morning and I had a long journey back home. I managed to pick up tons more chicken from this outlaw's hut. And as soon as I came back, I made another chest, which I upgraded all the way up to gold. Then with all these spawner scraps and aurora crystals, I made a quantum catcher, which would actually help me bring a villager to my base. I ended the night by making a tetra workbench and a tool belt. Now this tool belt was kind of hard to get the hang of, but it actually becomes very helpful later. 32 days in, I'm gonna go get tons of diamonds and then we'll work on a, work on a storage system after, hopefully. Before leaving, I decided to make some large water wheels in front of my base and these things generate tons of stress. So one of them around just in case I needed to uh, move things faster. Properly setting this thing up actually took a little bit. Anyway, once I had a few water wheels up and running, I went over to the mine shaft. From here, I jumped down to deep slate level. Y equals minus 47. Oh, diamonds immediately. Boom. Okay, perfect. This is like legit one of the coolest things ever. What does this machine go for a pretty long bit? Once again, this giant drill was running very well and I basically had it go for a long time. I did have to do a little bit of troubleshooting in between. Like I swapped the cobblestone for deep slate and then replaced the filter as well since I had like tons of deep slate at this point. Doing all of this, I managed to only pick up three diamonds from this machine. The other like 17 were by hand. At least I was able to use this goblin to get more stuff though. From there, I checked out this ancient nether portal and this place had pretty bad loot aside from like one diamond ore. At that point, I decided to go back home. Back home, I saw that you could actually make guns in this mod pack, so I started crafting this workbench. I hunted down some squids, crafted a cutting board, and got black dye. Once that was done, I made a light gray dye and turned that into light gray concrete powder, which I bulk washed. From there, I crafted a workbench and put it right in front of my house. I also learned here that you could make a flying machine and the easiest one was this thing called a gyrodyne and uh, this thing actually needed a precision mechanism. So making this item was number one priority. I first got rid of this nether portal because I wanted to use this little area. I also started grabbing all the items needed to make this entire weird process work. First I made a brass casing and turned that into a smart observer. I then crafted some encased chain drives, and with those items ready, the main thing I needed now, which was way out in the ocean. We have dropper, a uh, smart observer, shoot, we need mechanical belts. We have this, the two funnels. This one is pretty expensive, but they both need dried kelp. Anything that needed kelp would have to wait for a little bit longer as I got the rest of the items ready. In between pressing some of these ingots, I went down to the mine to pick up tons of zinc. The zinc is basically used to mix in with copper and it just churns out tons of brass ingots. Once all these things got mixed and pressed, I had three deployers and three item vaults as well. I placed all of these items inside of a chest in the area I wanted to build this machine in. As soon as all that was done, I hopped on my boat and rode through this river all the way out towards the ocean. I picked up a stack of kelp and started making my way back home. Here, I actually forgot to switch out the lava, so most of my kelp got burned away. I did have 15 leftovers, so I used one flame this time, which actually gave me dried kelp. This allowed me to make three mechanical belts and two funnels, one being andesite and the other one being brass. It took forever, but I could now construct this machine. I'll leave the tutorial in the description because it was a lifesaver. I started off with the collection system and then mechanical belts leading to a chute. From there, I put a smart observer behind the chute, then a dropper on top of that, and three item vaults, which are used to push items in and out. To power everything, I placed four encased chain drives in weird positions, and then hooked up the deployers. For the finishing touches, I put these funnels in front of the item vaults, one as an input and the other as an output. Then on top of the deployers, I had hoppers with double chests on top. Just cause it looked nice, I also used item frames. And to automate this, I used some planks to set up a redstone signal with a lever. 
Okay, that fire signals. Let's go. And then a gearbox. There we go, like this. Oh, it is working. This just pulls out everything. So that'd be the gold sheets that go into here. This shoots it out. This. This. Boom. And let's put all this in here. Let's turn it on. Boom, we'll pick that up. Set it in the filter. And it should pick it up. There we go. And I'll do this five times. This is so cool. This is actually the coolest thing I've ever done. <laughs> oh, and then it goes to the chute. It goes to the chest. Yo. That is amazing. Trial one ended up being a success and I got my first precision mechanism. I needed one more, but the second one actually failed and only gave me back a gold plate. A 39 to day 41, one of those terminals also needed a precision mechanism. So while I ran the process for my second one, I cleared out some area around this contraption. Then I basically built like four walls with deep slate tiles and then a glass design in the center just to spice things up. It was actually looking pretty decent. And by the next morning, I had the roof filled out with redwood. Then I could finally start crafting the gyro dome. This thing needed tons of iron, which I was actually now short on. So I hopped down into the mines and placed down this large drill. Using this, I managed to clear a huge area and picked up tons of ores. Since I had so many ores, I was able to get tons of ingots from this goblin as well. I then picked up the drill, came home, and cooked up the rest of the ores that I couldn't trade. With that done, I started making propellers, windmill sails, which turned into large sails, and hulls. All of this was just for a very basic flying machine. Now this thing was absolutely awesome since it didn't take up a lot of space, it didn't need runways, and it didn't need fuel. I just had to move forward until I got up to like 100%. Before the night ended, I even managed to craft a storage terminal and one inventory connector. Day 42 to day 45, so with this terminal, I wanted to make a large storage system. I cleared out an area next to my house, right in front of the coast. I then used these Cataclysm stone tiles as the floor and uh, also crafted inventory cables. I ended up turning them into the framed version and then placed down a bunch of chests. After that, I also used these inventory cable connectors to try and hook it up to the system. By the morning, I had a good amount of chests set up and ran around looking for flowers that I could turn into dyes. A green dye was the hardest to get, but I managed to get some by milling a ton of flowers and I was able to craft a paint kit which helped me cover up these ugly cables. Later on, I ended up moving the terminal back a few blocks so it would connect the two chests and that basically made all the other chests available so things were working perfectly. I started transferring all of my items in after that. Once that was done, I made a row of sophisticated storage chests. This was supposed to separate like more redwood chests later. Once all that was finished, I grabbed some dark oak logs and placed them around the corner of this little setup. I used stone slabs for the roof and tried doing the same design for the walls as I did with the precision mechanism contraption, but I was actually using glass paint so this looked ugly. I fixed it up later. After making a path, lighting the area up and fencing the entrance off, this storage system was up and working perfectly. 46 days in, I think it's time to go exploring. I'm gonna grab my gyrodyne. We'll go to the right. Let's go. This thing is honestly so cool. And there's a sign which should show us where well, there's a structure. 200 blocks this way. Honestly, I should snatch up a villager. So I think there's a comfort mod for trades. So I wanna, I have to make a little, little hut for a mending villager soon. Whoa, what is this structure? What is this place? I'm having all this. Tons of villagers in here. What in the world? Where is this stupid guy from? Oh my god, the blindness is so annoying. Tons of create stuff. This is a sick place. Yeah, especially you. Like, legitimately, you can't have enough of these things. And that's plenty of good stuff. After ransacking that structure, I took the long way back to my base and ran into that one farmer illager tower again. Now these places always have mending books, so I got all the way to the top floor, picked the book up, and then worked my way down, grabbing tons of food. By the time it was morning, I was inside of some uh, enchanter tower, and this place had like some ghosts. I managed to get tons of XP, and on the bottom floor, I fought a zombie hoglin. With that done, I started making my way home. What is that effect? Oh. Did you burn my machine? 
the lightning struck exactly where my flying machine was, my gyrodyne. Oh my god, I gotta make another one. I was super unlucky, so as soon as I got back home, I started the process for another precision mechanism. I also put most of the items I had away and uh, started gathering a bunch of andesite. Then I recrafted the gyrodyne. Before the night ended, I put two mending books on my helmet and chest plate and then rolled enchants until I got an unbreaking three book, which I put on my pickaxe. Let's grab all of our fluid tanks. Also turn this into netherite too. So there's a gilded netherite version, but I don't think I care about that. Boom. So around this time, I wanted to get a steam engine up and running. And for fun, I actually used this saw and hand crank to get tons of logs. All of these logs would be needed for casings later anyway. So it'd be like a placeholder block right there to just do like this. We'll just do like four. Should be everything. Boom. So we need this thing to rotate to pull in the water. Small cogwheel into large cogwheel. And that should pull water in. There we go. So with water coming in and a few blaze burners set up, I could make a proper steam engine. I hopped into a cave real quick to get some andesite. And when I came back, I also upgraded my backpack and swapped around some cog wheels. I even set up the steam engine, but had a bunch of issues at this point. I really didn't know that all I had to do was just speed up my pump. Instead, I made some regular burners, remade the nether portal, and repaired my pickaxe real quick. From there, I hopped into the nether, sat on my gyrodyne, and flew over to a fortress. As I was grabbing two blazes, I ended up picking up one wither skeleton skull while I was here. Well, you, sir, you help me out. Oh my god. Dense skin. New skill. Oh, sick. Uh, skills. Dense skin. One, two, three, four, five, six. Okay, that's it. Whoa, look at my armor rating at the bottom. Around this fortress, I actually explored one of these towers, which had a bunch of chests. It didn't matter though, since the loot all happened to be pretty mid. When I flew back to the fortress, I used the rest of my levels on dense skin, and inside one of the chests, I picked up the nether eye and a withered tome. The tome gave me 11 levels, and then I felt brave enough to hop back into this hall of the Piglin King. Now since this dimension was really hot and you needed a lamp, I couldn't really equip a shield, which made all these fights significantly harder. I ended up fighting some insane piglins. One of these guys had netherite armor, but the worst ones were the dudes with pickaxes. I managed to pick up two diamonds this entire time, and on the top floor, I was getting swarmed by mobs. You can't even really hide, since these guys would just break blocks. I ate some golden apples to survive. I ended up not learning my lesson and kept trying to fight all these dudes. My armor was also taking a beating and the only thing good I picked up were these golden apples. Oh. Dude, my heart couldn't take it. I can't take it anymore. We gotta get out of here. As I flew away from this place, I learned that the burning arena was also right behind it. If you're keeping track, a fortress, a piglin hall, and a burning arena all spawn like right next to each other. Anyway, from there, I collected the quest rewards for all this exploring and got a good amount of levels. I then uh, picked up some soul sprouts near the portal and came back to the overworld. After fitting two more blaze burners under the steam engine, I was still having tons of issues, so I would need to fix that later. I instead made diamond leggings and boots since my old ones either got destroyed or were almost destroyed. It took a few rolls to get decent enchants, but uh, once again, after I did, I decided to place this villager down so I could roll for a mending trade. Day 52 to day 54, I spent a good portion of this day just rolling this villager's trades. I actually had to move this guy since he was taking a bunch of other jobs. There we go. That's actually super cheap. What is it? We'll grab all of our animals and books. One, two, three. Once I picked up all these mending books, I ended up spending the entire night trying to get these large water wheels to spin my pump. No matter what I did, it wasn't working. I basically was trying this until the morning, and uh, eventually I gave up and decided to do it another way. First, I was using two large cogs and a hand crank. This basically filled up the water requirement, but to automate it, I hooked up a steam engine to the top of the water tank and then connected it to a gearbox and then connected the entire thing back down to the cogs. Now, after lighting up the blaze burners, the steam engine was fully up and running. I had enough stress to power the mechanical crafters too. 
With that done, I put mending on my pickaxe, leggings, and boots, then focus on advancing this villager's trades. In the morning, I actually spread all the lanterns that I picked up from this villager around my base, and then I uh, collected this ring of seven curses, which I didn't even equip. Before going out to explore, I placed down one more steam engine on this tank. Oh, now I can actually explore some of these ships. I remember there was one. Can you even hurt me? Barely. That was one of the smartest things I've ever done. I'm gonna be so honest with you. That was definitely not worth the loot. Here's a ship. Tons of illagers, oh boy. This pirate ship was awesome. I found tons of loot, and then inside of the actual treasure room, I picked up gold blocks and emerald blocks. I also burnt this ship down because uh, I was getting cold and then started flying back to my base. Day 55 to day 56, to start working with these mechanical crafters, I first sanded down some rose quartz. Then after making more brass casings, I had 15 crafters to work with. I set this thing up right next to the steam engine, but I didn't really power it up just yet. Instead, since I was running out of wool, I went to collect these uh, industrial hemp seeds. After farming these, I was able to turn them into wool, and uh, more importantly, turn that into large sails. By the next morning, I turned the crafters to its side so I could power all of it. Then I started the process to make a precision mechanism as I was mixing up items to make andesite alloys. Here I actually made a big mistake, and uh, instead of using regular cogwheels and large cogwheels, I ended up making the half shaft version, which basically just stopped this entire contraption. I didn't really figure out what I did wrong, so I was just super confused. Still, I did make more of the items needed for this biplane. That mistake was actually pretty embarrassing. I spent the entire day trying to troubleshoot this contraption. I removed all the deployers, reset the filters, I even rebuilt the entire thing which took the whole night and only figured out my mistake by looking at the recipe once more. Oh my god, I'm an idiot. Oh, I'm so stupid. Well, once I fixed that thing, I had like four incomplete precision mechanisms that needed to be fixed up, but uh, everything was working, which was nice. I then needed only one more item to make this biplane, and while checking out this recipe, it turned out that making sturdy sheets would be another hassle. I would need crushers to first crush obsidians, and then another contraption to hammer the dusts. So I picked up all the mechanical crafters for now, and hopped into the nether to get more crying obsidian. I picked it up in this one little dungeon and crafted a scroll forge while I was there. Then I fought a ton of mobs and all these guys happened to be really strong. I only stayed because I wanted to steal this wither skeleton skull. So now in total I had two. With that done I came home to place this scroll forge down. I ended up getting logs as a quest reward and this forge was just so I could make scrolls of recall. I ended up needing ink and ender pearls. I really want this uncro uncommon scroll but I need ink. Let's go over to that woodland mansion thing. See if we can find some of these guys. I, I need the ink. That thing right there. What even is this? So this place was like a jungle fortress and almost immediately I fought some strong mobs. These armored up baby zombies and one mob called the zombie king actually did a bunch of damage to me. Once I took care of them, I checked out the chest in the first room and was surprised at how good they were. What is this? Heart of a golem. This thing looks sick. Plus four armor rating. We're gonna keep that. Oh, and we got some of these things. Perfect. Hold on, let me properly check the passives. 25% melee damage, plus 16. Active ability, absent. Oh, more chests. We need these. Oh, and an old eye. Later on, inside one of these chests, I got uncommon ink, and then deeper into the structure, I found tomes. The rest of the loot in here were pretty solid, and I picked up a ton of like little items from other mods, and also collected my quest rewards. I ended up getting some food and more logs. That was my cue to start flying home. After putting all the items away, I had enough ink to make two scrolls of recall. With that done, I focused on getting these crushing wheels. I set up the crafters, gave it some power, and went down to a cave to collect more andesite. With the andesite alloys then mixed up, I was able to craft two crushing wheels. The next issue I had was actually powering these things, and basically he wanted them to rotate in the same direction. I could only get these things moving like away from each other which was super annoying and after a while I figured it out using one water wheel, a clutch, and some gear boxes. From there, I started crushing all the obsidian that I had. Yeah, this thing's set up, crushing wheel. Do I have any like regular diamond gear? I think we can finally like put this thing to use. Oh, whoa. Oh, I guess it's all a chance thing. Okay. 
From there, I grabbed a spout, three depots, and two mechanical presses. Once that was done, I cleared out a pretty large area, which meant this bridge had to go. After all that was done, I started placing the machines down. In the first depot, lava will be dispersed, and then I wanted all these things to go through the mechanical belts, where it's basically pulled through the presses. To power this thing, I used a water wheel and encased chain drives. Once all this was moving, I needed the spot to start pumping in lava, so I made a quick trip to the nether. To get this pump to work, I basically did it manually using a cog and a hand crank. Finally, after all of that, I got an unprocessed obsidian sheet, which was then pressed two times into a sturdy sheet. I ended up grabbing more lava, which allowed me to get five sturdy sheets in total. Both of the things that I needed to craft required precision mechanisms, which meant I just started filling up these double chests and let it fix up all of these old unprocessed mechanisms. With all that done, I set up tons of mechanical crafters and put all the items needed for a crafting terminal. This process was a little tedious, but uh, this thing was absolutely necessary. The next thing I wanted to craft was the biplane, so I set up the crafters for that. Then, I also made an advanced engine, which is what needed those steel plates. From there, I got myself a biplane, and then I uh, also wanted to make this advanced wireless terminal. Turns out this terminal needed a thing called a vibration mechanism, and this was basically the same process as the precision mechanism, just with different items. So since I already had the machine set up, I pressed down some rose quartz and had it go through the deployers, which had amethyst shards, cog wheels, and redstone. After five times, I made this vibration mechanism and crafted the advanced wireless terminal. I ended up replacing my tool belt with this thing and then uh, enchanted this new axe which ended up being pretty stacked. Day 65 to day 68, I wanted to grab some deep slate from my mining machine, but uh, since it was between like claimed chunks and unclaimed chunks, one side of it completely broke. That's not even the worst part because I had to spend the entire night fixing this stupid machine. By the morning, I finally had it completed and uh, picked up which meant that I could actually do what I wanted. I went over to the nether, flew towards the fortress, and went to the main room. From there, I took these stairs all the way down, which got me down to Y equals 15. And here, I even picked up a wither skeleton skull. I then cleared out a large area, placed my drill down, and this machine was working very well in the nether. It actually cut through half of this fortress. In between this, I made the machine place down netherrack too. And uh, at this time, I'd already mined like a pretty large area. Still, I only picked up one ancient debris from all of this. Even inside of this huge tunnel, I couldn't find anything but netherrack. I decided to come home after this and cooked up two pieces of ancient debris that I had. Then, with these three wither skeleton skulls, I summoned a wither deep into this mine shaft. I took out the wither pretty easily, but it still did a ton of damage to me. On the bright side, I picked up a wither eye and a nether star. As I made my way back through the mine shaft, I even found a lost eye inside of a chest. Back home on the roof of my storage system, I decided to make a beacon up here. At first, I only needed like a level 1 beacon. This was so the wireless terminal was now available anywhere throughout the overworld. I needed a tier 4 to make it work across every dimension. With that done, I even crafted this piston armor thing, which was just a huge mech suit. Before the night ended, I crafted a rifle in the workshop called the LM Scoot, which was just like a more accurate bow. On the 69th day, we need to check off a bunch of eyes. Let's actually go out. This doesn't feel like Minecraft anymore. This is insane. So at this point, I realized I didn't have enough runway space for the biplane and just stuck with this gyrodyne. I was basically looking for the eyes, which would help me uh, go to the end. While I was exploring, I also picked up these buckets of oil, which I could use for space travel later. Then I was on top of a battle tower where I picked up more blocks of iron and gold. By the next morning, I looted all the chests inside of this castle structure too, and the loot only happened to be like ingots and some diamond gear which I could crush later. From there, I spent the entire day trying to find any structure. I ended up inside of a hunter's cabin that night. Here, I picked up the Bad Omen effect after defeating tons of pillagers and had a plan to get two more unique eyes. The plan was just to start a raid, so I flew over to the safest little village I knew. The first thing I did here was block the doors off, and then I grabbed my new weapon and I was just firing at these villagers from, from pretty far away. This weapon was so effective, I was actually really impressed. I managed to clear the first wave easily and breeze through the second wave just as fast. When I got into the deeper waves, these uh, legionnaires started spawning, but more importantly, I was finally taking out witches. I actually needed a witch's pupil and evoker eyes. That's why I even started the entire raid. My rifle was able to take out these ravagers very quickly, and I managed to pick up the evoker eye, which meant I just needed to fully complete the raid. The last few waves took a little bit longer, since I had to look through this one little cave for stragglers. 
When I came home, I used this witch's pupil to make a witch's eye, and then in the morning, I actually used the eye to find out where this stronghold could be. But uh, one of my wither eyes broke, which meant I had to be very careful using my next ones. Before following any of these eyes, I made some advanced bullet pouches. I'm 72 days in, I'm just following whatever angle my ender pearl made, and I really don't want to use these too much, because the two that I did use just popped immediately. I'm not in the mood for, you know, messing around with any more. I'm keeping an eye out for an ocean monument too, just so I can mark that thing down. After an entire day of traveling, I popped another eye and found out I was right above a stronghold. After digging down, I fell into the main room. Now because this stronghold was made for the mod pack, this thing was massive. I unlocked the end quest here and was able to get like extra eyes. Deeper into this stronghold, I found a library and this place was also pretty large. I had to use my rifle to take out these large centipedes. Here I picked up some insane books and tomes and then moved on. Turns out this structure was also pretty confusing and I think I might have found the way to the portal but I had one large issue. I needed to get past this maze but this maze was above lava so the heat was almost deadly to me. How do I not die in this situation? Right, let's walk back home. Jeez. Yeah, I don't understand how you can not die in this situation. After cooling off, I looked at this sewing table and tried making my armor more resistant to heat. Leather is neutral, chameleon molt is adaptive, augment is heat, and goat fur is cold mitigation. I need heat mitigation. That night, since I finally ran out of bread, I was able to cook up my potatoes. Then I went to the nether to collect more hog skin, which should, in theory, help me handle more heat. Finally, I crafted a stack upgrade for the backpack since the baked potatoes took too much space. With the stronghold found, I still needed a bunch more eyes and to basically complete two goals, I hopped into the nether. I wanted more netherite and a corrupted eye from a bastion. I noticed along the way that my temperature would stay lower now even without the lamp. Other than that, I stole another wither skeleton skull from this weird structure and ransacked a fortress. I was using my new weapon a lot during all of this, just shooting down gas and blazes. I, I see, I saw something in the minimap. Oh, it, there's a bastion. Oh, oh my goodness. What even is this thing? Grants freezing immunity. Should I swap that for another ring? Do I have? I barely ever get frozen. Give me something good. Give me another ring. It's. Let's go. Inside of this bastion, I also got my corrupted eye that I needed and found an even better structure as I got out of here. This thing looks crazy. What is this? Three blocks of coal. This is a catacomb, dude. Whoa, another skeleton knight. Insane. What the heck? One more netherite ingot. Let's go. And a wither tome. And hopefully, you got one more netherite ingot for me. No, you do not. With all that done, on the way home, I collected a few quest rewards that I got and bulk cooked more ancient debris. In total, I had four netherite ingots, so I upgraded my armor and pickaxe. Let's go cover me in debris. I look sick. To end these days off, I made a level 2 beacon and put tons of levels into dense skin and strong fist. I'm gonna go try and find in one of those ice maze biomes. I was around these very cold biomes for a while and then fought a bunch of illagers on the ship. Here I picked up even more emeralds and gold blocks, which would be a huge help for the beacon. I also snatched up more of these oil, very inefficiently though. From there, I finally found an ice maze biome and this place only had an outpost, which meant I couldn't really fight the boss here just yet. In the morning, I found a cataclysm boss structure. This place was called a sunken city and was home to the leviathan. To fight this boss, I needed to figure a few things out. First, I made a boiler and heated up these water skins. Using these, I could actually cool or heat up my temperature, which would be needed underwater. At this point, the temperature was uh, taken care of, but every time I jumped in the water, I froze, which I assumed that this ice resistance potion was good for. Going back home, I also marked down an ocean monument, and as soon as I landed, a raid started. This was just pretty annoying. The mobs were storming my bases, but they really didn't do too much damage at all. Once all those guys were taken care of, I also farmed these soul sprouts next to my nether portal, and then made potions of ice resistance and free breathing. 
Day 79 to day 81, the first thing I did was go over to a tower and trade it with a cleric. Now some of these guys can sell an evil eye, so I decided to advance all the trades that I could. I managed to not get lucky at all, so I flew back home to create a runway behind my base. I was having a pretty hard time taking off with this biplane. It took me like three tries. Turns out all you had to do was just hold back. This thing was so much more inconvenient than the gyrodone and it was barely faster. I even made this brass propeller thing as an upgrade, so I decided to stick with a gyrodyne after anyway. I took this thing to an ocean monument, drank my ice resistance and free breathing potion and started working my way through this entire structure. I fought my first Elder Guardian here and didn't get a Guardian Eye. Then in one of the bigger rooms, I fought a second Elder Guardian and also didn't get the Eye. On the bright side, I did pick up a ton of good loot from the chests, including this XP Harvest skill. After taking out the last Elder Guardian here, I ran out of the structure and collected the quest reward for getting a Guardian's Eye. Then on the way back home, I put one more level into Den Skin and finally found the shipwreck I needed. I unlocked this enchanter skill here and picked up a shell horn. I then used that horn to summon the ghost of Captain Cornelia and this fight was a lot tougher than I thought it was gonna be. Initially, I was able to get the boss's health down to a third and then it started pulling out the craziest moves. I started getting spun around and hit by these poisonous blades. I relied on my rifle a lot and after eating some golden apples and uh, once this boss was fully healed up, I managed to take care of it. So this boss ended up dropping a weapon called a Coral Lance, which was much stronger than my Netherite Sword and buffed my armor. So I brought it home and was able to put Sharpness 3 and Mending on it. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9. We could get lucky with a few already filled in. We are here. Where did I dig down? So it was like at this moment, I realized just how big this stronghold was. I was inside a room that had an elevator and this thing started at Y equals 11 and it took me all the way down to Y equals negative 57. The funniest part of all this was that this place wasn't even where the end portal was. It was just some side room that had a cool statue in the center. Anyway, I managed to get all the way back up to the main stronghold and this time I broke through some blocks which allowed me to bypass the maze that I couldn't even finish last time. Since I was already kind of annoyed, I broke this really cool looking door and finally got to the end portal. Here I filled up the nine slots and didn't really get lucky with some of the frames uh, being already filled. With that done, I staircased out of this portal room which was really deep underground. Pretty close to this stronghold was an illager camp and this place had a trapped villager. I turned this dude into a cleric and the master level trade here happened to be an evil eye. To get this I used my one and only rabbit's feet and then I used this nature's compass to find a jungle biome. Here I got very lucky and saw a jungle temple right away. This place was kind of a nightmare though since almost every block happened to be infested and there was a point where my screen was covered in silverfish. Like there was so many I started burning them on like each level of this temple. On the bright side, I did get this rogue's eye and back home, I realized I already had one undead soul too. Before grabbing gas tears, I did a few things. First, I got sharpness 4 on my lance, then I put protection 4 on my chest plate and uh, with the rest of the levels I had, I put it into XP harvesting. With all of that done, I went into the nether, took down the gas for the tears and came home to craft the last eye I needed and this was called the undead eye. So we have undead eye, evil eye. And then, the rogue eye. Okay. Oh boy. Okay. Let's summon this guy. The dragon is being summoned. I guess the particle effects aren't showing up. Oh! What happened to my gyrodyne? It just evaporated. What in the world? God, we have tons of ammo. I'm actually really glad we stocked up on this. So I realized that this end dimension was meant to be the final dimension since all these mobs were like level 30 plus. These endermen did so much damage and had way too much health. I did however manage to blow up uh, two end crystals as the dragon was attacking and that took down a decent portion of the dragon's health. With that done, during the first perch, I think I hit the dragon like 50 times and barely did any damage. The worst part was that this dragon was now summoning like a, a wave of lightning bolts. The moment I realized that this fight was going to take forever was when I saw that dragon's health. It had 3042 health and I had barely gotten it down to half. After tons of mindless hitting, I finally got the ender dragon down to low health and at this point it started doing wither damage to me. After it launched me up in the air, I had one of my totems pop. Let's go. Oh my god. 
what an insanely stupid fight oh my god bye bye get the heck out of here with all this done i grabbed the xp dragon egg and took the end gateway out to the islands all right let's do a, some skills what are we doing what does this do hey oh, then skip to level 15 let's get up to level strong fist yeah, that's it yeah level 12. So out here I had even more issues and uh, that was all because of the ridiculously strong mobs. Yeah, I'm running low on ammo, but there is a, one structure there that has tons of pillagers. I can see it on the minimap and uh, there's an end city over here. Let's not even mess with that because I'm, I'm hating this dimension right now. My shield's broken, which is annoying. These guys are all high levels too. I actually don't mind being lifted up here. Inside this main tower, I ended up getting tons of really good loot. On the top floor, there was even better stuff, but the best item was this extra health skill. I immediately put tons of levels into this skill and then used one orb of temporary flight to go over to the end ship. Here, I snatched up the elytra wing and any other decent loot from the chests. Finally, with all that done, I looked through some more end islands and decided to use all my XP on maxing out dense skin and strong fist. I then put one more level into extra health. Out here, I even found the ruined citadel, but I was not looking to challenge this end guardian, so I marked it down and came home. I put a bunch of items away and started to remake this gyrodyne once again. This process took a pretty decent amount of time, and as soon as I was done, I started getting the items needed for a rocket. What generator? This thing? These two? And then what do we do? Whoa. Whoa, thank you for the anti-side alloys. Have to steal ingot, which is basically how we do that. We blast iron. Half of these. That's a workbench, and then we need to make this thing. Whoa. Anyway, to craft this thing, I just needed like a ton of items. I first cleared out an area to the right of my auto farm, then placed down a coal generator, which would run the other machines. This compressor would make steel plates, and from there I crafted two oxygen tanks and made the next machine, which was an oxygen loader. This thing needed water as an input. The final machine needed to go to the moon was just this fuel refinery, which turns the oil I gathered into proper rocket fuel. With all that, I picked up tons of fuel and crafted a NASA workbench. From there, I just needed a spacesuit and enough steel to craft this tier one rocket. The suit was easy to craft and load with oxygen. For the rocket, I ended up using almost all of my iron and even had to throw some anvils into the crusher. Oh, boom, boom. Let's go. That was basically all I needed to go to space. So I put that on a launch pad and filled it up with fuel. Then I turned my beacon into a full two layer beacon. I'm gonna go to the nether, challenge Ignis, see if I can find tons of more gold because we need 25 and then 18-ish. Boom. Put that on. Let's go challenge Ignis. The Leviathan is going to be probably a nightmare. Yeah. We also need Wither Skeleton Skulls, which I think I have two, but I need a Nether Star after. Okay. Let's go take down. Oh, it's only level five? Yeah, you're, you're not going to do much. There you go. There you go. It's two. See how strong this guy is? Not that bad. Okay, even with, with flight, it's not that bad. It's not bad at all, dude. The Nether doesn't scale much. Shield's gonna break. Alright, and then you're done. There we go. How many is that? Bro, go, go away. It's three. We need to defeat one more. Why did that do so much damage? Oh my goodness. There we go. Six Ignitium. And we got a quest reward. With Ignis taken care of, I checked out this Piglin Hall once more to see if I missed any gold blocks. Then deeper into this nether, I thought these pipeline sentry blazes were all like stocked up on totems. With that done, I came home to put another level into extra health and crush this diamond shield. So I thought that I would need a mechanical anvil to upgrade all the netherite armor, but it turned out you could just use a smithing table. You ended up needing the anvil to upgrade the elytra, so to get that, I crafted an eye of mech. As soon as that was done, I hopped into the mine shaft and ran my drill just so I could stock up on iron. With that tunnel dug up, I decided to explore a larger cave and here I picked up even more items. After cooking up all these items, I turned all the ingots and diamonds into blocks and with this, I finally made a level 4 beacon. From now on, I was able to access my storage from everywhere. 
I'm gonna go grab some wither skeleton skulls because I need one nether star. I was around this nether fortress and this inner RPG structure for a little bit and got three wither skeleton skulls. Then I went to that tunnel that I just made and easily took out the wither. From there, I used this eye of mech, which was pretty easy to craft to find the ancient forge. Turns out this place was underwater and underneath a mushroom looking mine shaft. After digging some more, I finally got to the boss structure. What in the world are you? Is it called the Prowler? Get the heck out of here. All right, let's go challenge this absolute beast. Take this to your chest. Yeah, you're pretty weak, never mind. Okay, yeah, you're screwed. I got you, boy. Out the new own little place. All right, that was easy. Boom. Use. Mechanical anvil. Let's make the combo right here. Boom. With the boss gone, I took all the loot from the treasure room and recalled home to make three breathing potions. Then I was able to only craft like six fireworks, but that ended up being more than enough. I flew all the way over to the sunken city. The only items I needed to make this abyssal sacrifice happened to be dropped from the mobs within this structure. So I jumped in the center of this place and immediately fought some deeplings. Turns out I needed to fight the priest who actually dropped the sword. And then around this structure, there were these mobs called the Coralysises. Some of these things were in the cages and that allowed me to get the final item I needed. Once the abyssal sacrifice was in my hands, I went down to the center to summon the Leviathan. Oh, there it is. This thing's huge. My first time fighting Leviathan. Dude, come here. No way I'm gonna die to this. Oh no, you're so easy. Please don't be this easy. Bye, bud. What is happening? I don't even know. Did I do it? Oh, okay, well. That was very, very easy. Back home, I put this abyssal egg down and started using this grappling hook. Later that day, I put the spacesuit on. Go over to the moon. Got my fuel buckets. I'm gonna, I'm gonna keep one, two, three, and a launch pad on me because I think that's how you return. Let's see if this works. Three, two, one. Let's get out of here. The indicator to the left is basically gonna tell me when we've hit the moon. Oh, we're here. Okay, so we should land very slowly. We're here. Okay, I can still access my inventory. Boom, boom, we'll take all that. And the moon. I need 32 dash ingots. I don't know how to get dash. I think dash is found in caves. So at this point, I really wanted to build a space station in orbit as well. And for that, I would need tons of materials. Inside of this giant moon cave, I immediately picked up tons of dash ore and decided to cook some here so I could complete a few quests. The moon also had an unbelievable amount of iron ore, so I had like more than two stacks of that. Once I got a stack and a half of dash, I jumped out of the caves, placed on a launch pad, filled up my rocket once again. I activated this thing and landed back on Earth. When I flew back home, the baby Leviathan also hatched. I kept it safe inside of my quantum catcher for now. Once that was done, I cooked up all the iron and dash ore and then began making plates and ingots of each. Before the night ended, I loaded up more oxygen into my suit and even ended up with looting three on my coral lance. Day 97 to day 98, I had a few more oil buckets, which I refined and then began enchanting my spacesuit. This process took a little bit since I was re-rolling a bunch of things. I also replaced some of my emerald blocks with gold blocks so I could buy mending books. Once the armor was set, I drank this ice resistance potion so I could withstand the temperature and took off. Let's do, okay. We have enough of everything. Let's do right here. How close are we to landing? We gotta keep it. We gotta keep it really slow. Otherwise you literally explode the space station. We did it. Beautiful. This is really pretty. Yeah, I expected this space station to be gigantic, but it was the size of a tiny little shack. I ended up uh, remaking a launch pad and coming back home. Here, I turned my attention to this dimension called the Altar Lands. I uh, crafted enough obsidian B12 blocks to make a portal and then needed to oxidize some copper before making the Rift Totem, which actually activates this portal. Anyway, by the next day, I wanted to go to Mars, which needed more dash, and that meant I had to go out and stock up on even more oil. This frozen ocean allowed me to fill up so many buckets. 
Back home, I refined tons of this and loaded up my suit with some more oxygen. As soon as that was done, I hopped right back into the moon to mine like six blocks worth of dash ore. With all that time spent in here, I had a pretty insane amount of dash and even fought some aliens. With all that done, I came home to load up my suit once more and after cooking everything, it turned out I had 13 blocks of dash. This was way more than enough for me to craft a tier 2 rocket. Before going to Mars, my copper oxidized, so I made a rift totem and activated this altar lands portal. My quest reward for that was a few netherite ingots and I checked this dimension out. Now this place was weird with very odd looking mobs. I also couldn't find any good structures, so I decided to get out of here and go to Mars instead. Let's go check Mars out. I can't wait, I'm actually excited for Mars. I wanna, yeah, if I have time, if I can do it in time, I wanna make the a tier three rocket or something. Let's land on this bad boy. Okay, pull up now. Whoa, let's go. Turns out Mars was very underwhelming. It just happened to be the moon, but orange. Anyway, I did craft a rover, which was absolutely awesome and gave me tons of levels. Then I spent most of the time underground mining this Mars Ostrom ore. Down here, I fought these Martian Raptors and then launched back home after I had enough Ostrom. Using all these ores, I was able to make a tier three rocket and then saw that I needed a netherite spacesuit to survive on Venus and Mercury. Sadly, I didn't have enough time to get the netherite since it was already day 100. If you made it this far, leave a like and let me know in the comments if you want 200 days.